Guys, today's Browns report is presented to you by Manscaped. I right, get the best men's grooming products on the market. Plus, Manscaped has a great deal for you guys. When you check them out at manscaped.com slash chat and you use the promo code chat, they're going to hook you up with 20% off and free shipping. Don't miss out on this great deal. All the information you need is in the comments and the description of this video. Week 5 time, preview time. Browns versus Chargers. Had some breaking news come out uh, this morning, so I basically had to reshoot, actually, because Baker Mayfield's injury, which we're going to touch upon in a little bit, uh, don't, you don't have to wait too long, took another step. We got some more information on that, so we're going to get into that early in the video. Plenty to unpack here, but first, what I want to know from you guys, though, is if you got the Browns over the Chargers this week, then go ahead and like this video. Let me get a pulse of the fan base, see where everyone is feeling. Don't dislike the video because that's just negativity towards the Browns, and no one wants to see that. But if you do got the Browns beating the Chargers, go ahead and like this video. Hopefully seeing a bunch of likes. Hopefully the Browns are 4-1 and one when I'm standing up here next week. All right, let's get ready for this matchup. Let's get some... Factoids at you guys here. Chargers open up as two-point favorites. Over under, I think that's right at a good number right there. 46 and a half. Good Chargers offense. Browns offense just haven't seen enough for me to really fall in love with the over just yet. But the big news, all right, it's what Ian Rappaport tweeted out this morning. Let me read it to you guys about Baker Mayfield. Browns quarterback Baker Mayfield, who has been wearing a shoulder harness to play, suffered a partially torn labrum in his left shoulder on September 19th versus the Texans. Sources say no surgery needed as of now. He was listed on the report after the injury and hasn't missed a practice snap. So I got a couple quick thoughts here to hit at you guys. One. This story has evolved a little bit more by the two weeks we've had. All right, yesterday it was revealed by yeah on Wednesday it was revealed he was wearing a harness on his left shoulder. Today we get a partially torn labrum. All right, my big question though is how is it not bad enough that he can practice and not miss a snap? Like it just doesn't really add up to me. And maybe he's just beyond tougher than I could ever imagine. He's only the t one of the toughest quarterbacks in the NFL. Uh, has yet to miss a start since taking over in 2018 in that Monday Night Football game. But still, I mean, it's really impressive, honestly, on one front, that it, he is not miss a snap. I mean, one would think, all right, if he's got a partially torn labor and he just wants to gut through it, wow, like, bravo to you, clap it on, soldier on. You got bigger balls than I do. But for you to not even, like, be limited in practice, wow, that's just... That's what popped my eye. That's what like really took my attention right there. But last Sunday was not good for Baker. He knew that, and here's what he had to say in the middle of this week about last Sunday's game. I need to pick it up because if I think that piss-poor performance is going to cut it, it's not. So I'll get better. Luckily, we can lean on the defense and run the ball when we need to. This game on Sunday, for me, it's going to tell us a lot, all right? Was last Sunday a fluke? Was last Sunday just a combination of not a good day at the office plus his shoulder is still hurting? And this Sunday, well, it's a week more healthy. I mean, I, I never tore, partially tore my labor, so I don't know what that feels like. I can't imagine it feels good, though. Uh, but, yeah, very curious to see what this Sunday will get from us. I mean, again, this is going to be a big telltale sign. I am going to overreact. I'll tell you that right now. If Baker is not good on Sunday, I'm definitely going to overreact. I'm going to make two bad games a pattern and not just independent events. That's just my knee-jerk reaction right there. That's I'm telling you that right now. But I hope I'm not having that bad knee-jerk reaction Sunday night, Monday morning. I hope that last Sunday was just a fluke, but we got to monitor this. I mean, this is a big story here. Of course, you're not going to go very far this season flat out if Baker isn't 100%. That's just a sad reality at this point. But getting ready for the Chargers. Let's do some homework on them. Let's check out our notes here as to what the Chargers have done so far this season. All right. Week one, if you remember, went to Washington, pulled out a win on a BS pass interference call at the end of the game, but that was a while ago. Week two, they just played a hungrier Cowboys team. That's a Dallas Cowboys team that played on Thursday night week one, had a longer week to prepare, walk-off field goal, Greg the leg. They just wanted it more. All right, week three, though, wow, go to Kansas City, knock off the Chiefs. It's going to help the AFC push for the number one seed up a ton when the Chargers do that, but now the Chargers are not looking at it like they're 
you know, setting someone else up. I bet they're looking at it like, let's get that number one seed for ourselves. Um, and then week four against the Raiders on Monday Night Football. Herbert looked brilliant in that game flat out. I do think the Raiders are the most overrated team in the NFL. So I'm not going to read too much into that. Like, wow, they beat a 3-0 three, three team by two touchdowns. Uh, no, I think the Raiders are going to collapse. We're going to see them start rattling off a handful of straight losses. But as for Herbert, last week, Monday Night Football, he was great with the ball. If you watched the game, he didn't look like a second-year player at all. Just the decision-making, the confidence, everything around him, he looked like the NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year. He was last season. Three touchdowns, was great with the ball. Here's his numbers so far this season. They're just drooling numbers, honestly. I, I hate to... I don't know. I hate to fall in love with a guy that's not even on the Browns, but look at those numbers right there. Nearly 70% completion percentage. Uh, doing great with thing, doing great things with the football. Ten touchdowns, three interceptions. He is just not looking like a sophomore player. Flat out, he is looking not like an old vet, okay? But he's finding a middle ground right there. So Herbert is quickly ascending in the NFL ranks for quarterbacks in the NFL today. All right, guys, play a quick game right now. Browns, Chargers, predict the score. I want to know who you guys got. I'm going to give my score prediction at the end of the video, so you got to wait till then. I'll give my three keys to the game, all that good stuff. But I want to hear your score prediction, so let me see it down in the comments. Hopefully seeing a bunch of Browns over the Chargers. But I can understand if you got the Chargers. Two 3-1 teams clashing, Cleveland on the road. It's going to be a tough matchup, so predict the score for me down below. Guys, Halloween is right around the corner. You're going to see a lot of scary things out there, a lot of frights, a lot of scary costumes. Don't let below the belt line be the scariest thing your partner sees. That's not anything anyone wants to see. So let Manscaped help you out with that. Their Lawnmower 4.0 package has the hookup, all right? It's got a light on, so in dark crevices and nooks and crannies, you can see what you're trimming, all right? It comes with a weed whacker. Plus, it's all 20% off when you use manscaped.com slash chat, promo code chat, and they toss in free shipping. Looking at my notes over here, they're even going to throw in a couple free gifts here. It's like a I mean, I'm not going to say that. Never mind. But boxers and a shed travel bag, it's a goodie bag, okay? There's a lot of great stuff. Everything you need right there at Manscaped. The best men's grooming product on the market. And they hook you up with 20% off and free shipping. And all you got to do is check them out at manscaped.com slash chat. Promo code chat. Everything you need, if you didn't write it down, is in the comments and the description of this video. Halloween's coming up. Do not let that part of your body be the scariest costume on the street. Let that be whatever you put over your face or whatever costume you got above your birthday suit. Check them out. Now, we got some injury news coming here. We talked about Baker earlier on. Greg Newsom, he's not going to start this week. This will mark two straight misses for Newsom, who's dealing with the calf injury. I bet partially a, a big. Not, I, I bet a reason why he's not playing this week, at least a factor, was how great Greedy Williams played last week against the Vikings. Now, if Newsom's healthy, he's gonna play, all right, and he's probably gonna take a starting job back. But still, Williams looked great last week, so there's not a sense of panic or a sense to we really need Newsom back there after last week. That was a disaster. No, Newsom, uh, Williams had an interception. I bet he'll be uh, covering Mike Williams, so that'll be fun all day for the broadcast. Expect a handful of tongue twisters there. But yeah, no Newsom for the second straight week. Dredrick Wills. I couldn't hit water if I was in a boat in terms of nailing down this injury report. Every week, it's a, it's a re-aggravated ankle injury. And every week, he practices and play. play. So I, I, don't, I don't get what I'm missing here. But I'm happy to see he's probably going to play. That's the diagnosis. Most likely has the green light to play. Uh, at this time we're filming this, we don't have Thursday's injury report. But looking like he was day-to-day -day questionable, I bet he's going to play. He got carted off against the Vikings. And then this week it was you know, released that it wasn't as serious as expected. So hopefully he can keep soldiering on. But I do think an ankle injury is not something to play with. Especially just re-aggravating week after week. You just wonder if one point they just decide to just kind of shut it down for three weeks, put him on IR, and then let it get beyond healthy. But that's the latest report right there for those two key Brown starters. Talking about this matchup a little bit more, though. Slowing down the Chargers offense 
is absolutely pivotal. That's nothing new here. I'm not going to stand up here and pretend like I'm giving you guys the gospel or breaking news, all right? This Chargers offense is what leads this team, no doubt about it. They have a sneaky good defense, too. You don't really think of great defenses when you think of the Chargers, Junior Seau, maybe, but still, this Chargers offense, a lot to talk about. It's because of these four playmakers, all right? You got Justin Herbert, of course, but the three guys on the right, Austin Eckler is one of the league's best weapons. All right, He's got 68 total touches, 50 carries, 18 receptions, nearly at 500 total yards and four touchdowns already on the season just through four games. Keenan Allen is one of the most underappreciated wide receivers in the NFL. So it's going to be a long day for Denzel Ward covering him up. That's my prediction right there. And then Mike Williams, a former top pick in the first round, has not lived up to that status, but he's a climb up a tree and get it kind of player, and he's having a great start to this season. Four touchdowns already, 306 yards. He's usually kind of flaky week to week, but he's off to a better start than Keenan Allen pretty much, and I would not expect, I don't think I'd be saying that at this point in the season, but that's just the way it is shaking out. But let's look at this Chargers offense compared to the Browns defense now, okay? These are per game through four seasons. So the Chargers offense averaging nearly 400 yards per game, while the Browns defense, I mean, we know it is one of the best in the NFL, and these numbers support it. 250 yards per game, passing-wise, these guys are just, I mean, they're not even close. So something's going to have to give, all right? Chargers are passing for... 100 more yards than the Browns have been allowing this season. Now, these numbers for the defense on the Browns, I expect them to balloon up a little bit. They had a great game against the Bears offense, which had a team passing yard of one. That's just not going to happen ever again. And rushing-wise, they are exceeding my expectations, no doubt about it. But it's just difficult to sustain these kind of numbers throughout the whole season. The most jarring number right there for me is points per game. They're a touchdown apart. So you don't get that very often for two three and one teams. Maybe a three and one team and a one and three team, but not two three and one teams. Hopefully it's the Browns that can hold on to that stat, but this Chargers offense will be potent. Guys, I don't know if the defense can hold on this much longer, okay? This is a long football season. This, Char this Browns defense will be good all season long. But Baker, he said it last week. Remember that quote earlier in the video where he said, I can't, I, you know, I can rely on the defense in the run game. I wouldn't take that to the bank in each and every week. This may be asking too much to do it week after week. Last week, holding the Vikings to just one touchdown. Go back to the Bears game a week before. I mean, they, they lit up one touchdown in eight quarters, even more than eight quarters, actually. Um, no, not eight quarters, because they uh, Texans scored in the fourth quarter. But still, regardless, we're getting deep in the weeds there. All right. I, I just think this is reaching too much. So the Browns offense, they definitely need to step it up. And here's what it's looking at against the Chargers defense. Again, this is all per game numbers right there. Uh, I mean, the, the Browns offense run game. It's the number one in the NFL. 177 yards per game on the dot. And the Chargers run defense has been gashed, okay? So that's what you think the Browns game plan is to abuse, is just attack the run. That's their that's the hole in the Swiss cheese defense right there for the Chargers, which is, with Derwin James, a very good pass defense. So unfortunately, it's not going to be a nice rehab game for Baker Mayfield against a bad pass defense. No, this is one of the top pass defenses in the NFL with Derwin James. So it's going to come down to the run game once again. Surprise, surprise. Big game coming up. But before that, guys, subscribe right now to the Browns Report. We got a bunch of subscribers in our last video. I want to have more subscribers than the entire Chargers fan base by kickoff. That's not asking too much, all right? Not a ton of Chargers fans. I expect to see a lot of brown and a lot of orange at this game on Sunday at SoFi Stadium. Nearly at 3,000 subscribers as I record this right now. So if you haven't already, please subscribe. That way we can outnumber the Chargers not only at SoFi Stadium, but just from Browns Report subscriptions to people that claim to be Chargers fans. Besides Boltman, there's just no one out there. I'm sorry, it's the most pathetic fan base in the NFL, unlike the Browns, which is the most impressive fan base in the NFL. Time for my three keys to the game. You guys know I like to have fun with these keys. I'm not going to stand up on the podium like it's ESPN game day morning or anything like that and do be super analytical. So first key, number one, 
big kahunas kind of game, okay? This is a big game, all right? And what do I mean by that? Go back to the first drive of the Browns 2021 season. Remember when Baker Mayfield and Stefanski were basically basically putting their nuts in a wheelbarrow like Randy Marsh going around um, Arrowhead Stadium? That's what they need in this game because the Chargers, they have big kahunas. They showed that in their win against the Chiefs. That's what it's going to take to beat the Staley co Coach Chargers team. You can't go into L.A. and play this Chargers team and be soft. Big kahunas kind of game, and that's fine. Stefanski, he's got him. We've seen it time and time again from the Steelers' playoff game to the Chiefs' first game of the season. Needs to happen again this week. Key number two, getting off to a strong start. I'll sandwich my keys with a pretty serious key here. All right? This may seem a little obvious. Of course you want to get off to a strong start, but it's even more important when you're talking about Justin Herbert's numbers in the first half in the second half because they are night and day difference all right so it's very important for this uh browns team to not let herbert get off to a strong start we got the numbers here check them out here they are very far apart all right 70 percent completion percentage in the first half compared to 63.9 a six point difference right there 25 touchdowns this are his career stats by the way Verse 15 in the second half, or even more impressive, or biggest number, the interception skyrocket from 3 to 10. And if you're wondering, he's only thrown 30 more passes in the second half compared to the first half in his entire career. So these are not outlier numbers or miscued. They're pretty much identical in terms of attempts made between the two halves. Herbert is simply not a second half guy so far in his career, so don't let him capitalize in the first half. Getting off to a strong start is a big key in this game for the Browns. And then my third key, potentially the most important key, ignore their cool jerseys, all right? They're wearing the baby blues. They're going to look faster in them. It's on turf. It's in their fancy stadium. It's all the bells and whistles in the world. they got to be like horses on the street. Put the little blinders on and don't look at the cool jerseys. I'm not joking about this one, guys. Honestly, I think the Chargers have some of the best jerseys in the NFL. It's going to be a distraction. Hand up. So if you think I'm joking about this and not, when you guys are watching them on Sunday, just tune out the jerseys. Don't let it get to you. It's, it's going to be a factor, okay? I'm not joking about it. All right, guys, before we wrap up today's video, we got a couple more quick things to hit here. First one, did I miss any keys? I always love having a two-way conversation. That's what makes this Browns report so fun for me. Love to see what you guys are thinking. So if I missed anything, get down in the comments. Let me know if I missed any keys to this game. And then finally, once again, I'm going to give my score prediction in a moment. But I want you guys to predict the score for me. Browns Chargers, what are you thinking right now? My score prediction, don't throw, put the tomatoes down. I got the Chargers 25-20. So far, I'm 4-0 in picking Browns games this season. I like to be realistic. I wish I could say 17-0. That's just not going to happen. I got the Chargers. It's going to be a long travel day from Cleveland to L.A. It's a good Chargers team this year. They're not like the previous Chargers teams, it looks like, where they botched it at the last minute. Rivers is fourth quarter missed field goal interceptions slash ghosts are gone. I just think the Chargers eke this one out. I got to see this Browns offense improve before I can pick them to be a very high-powered Chargers offense. So I'm sorry. That's just the prediction. I want to keep it real with you guys. I wish I could pick the Browns each and every week. But let me know what your score prediction is. Hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully you're right down below.